Well, I'm thrilled to be talking with Janice Litvin today. She is an expert on burnout. She is the author of the new book, Banished Burnout Toolkit. Janice, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Well, one of the things that you talk about when you speak and in your book is the dynamic of stress response patterns. And we talk about stress a lot on this podcast. It's all about self-care. Many of us have a lot of different stressors. Talk to me about understanding our stress response patterns. Uh, Yes, that's a great question. So in general, there are two typical stress patterns And they're pretty obvious when you think about them. The first is exaggeration and the sec or overreacting. And the second is overgeneralization. So an Mm. overreaction might be, oh my gosh, I've been hit by a car. And, you know, we wouldn't be human if we didn't have a reaction. The problem comes when people get so overreactive that they can't think straight. Yes. So kind of like catastrophizing. Exactly. Histrionics. Yes. Yes. I'm really good at that. (laughs) (laughs) We all were. Well, if you think about, if you think about it, Kristen, it's a childlike reaction. Yeah. And hopefully when children grow up, their parents have role modeled Mm -hmm. more rational behavior, but many have not. Yep. And so that's where the problem comes in. Absolutely. Yeah. And then what's the second one that you mentioned? The second one is overgeneralizing. For example, you're always late to pick me up or you're Mm. always late to meet me for dinner. Well, are you always late to meet that person for dinner or are you just very upset because you're hungry and you're tired and it's cold outside and you're standing in front of a restaurant waiting and you really wish you could go in, but the other person's not responding to email or text or phone call. And so you're getting irritated, very, very irritated. Mm -hmm. And then when the person finally arrives, you're always late. Well, maybe the person's not really always late. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of related to the overreact overreaction. And it feels like that in the moment, but it's really, we're, we're just, again, kind of maximizing overgeneralized, overgeneralizing, making it big. Yes. Let me give you an example of this for the workplace. Um, and this is an example from my own life. And many, many people in my workshops tell me they relate to this. The boss sends you a text and says, we need to meet tomorrow, nine o'clock, oh, whether, oh, whether no. it's on Zoom or, or in person. And so instantly I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done now? It's, this is going to be negative. Yes. Well, it might be negative. Uh-huh. It might not be negative. Where did that pattern in your mind come from? In my case, I had a boss and every time he wanted to see me, it was indeed something negative. And I had to think about this and I carried it forward. In reality, the person might really just want to offer you a plum assignment and maybe they're really a wonderful boss Mm -hmm. and you you've catastrophized the situation based on a prior experience. Absolutely. Yes. I have done that many times. So how do we start to kind of unpack these stress response patterns? Because for many of us, it's a well-worn groove, you know, how do we forge a new path for ourselves? Uh, Yes, I'm glad you asked me. In my book, Banish Burnout Toolkit, I give a lot of exercises. So when something happens, what we want to do is try to move the reaction from the amygdala or the fear center of the brain Mm -hmm. to to the prefrontal cortex, the executive functioning part of the brain. The best way to do that, to get started doing that is to work what I call my stress audit. That's Mm. in tool number one of the workbook. So when something happens and it's always something could be an argument in a meeting at work, Mm -hmm. or it could be someone rear-ended you on the street. And so what helps is to really analyze with a fine tooth comb what happened. And by the way, when you write with pen and paper, it initiates a part of the brain that doesn't get initiated when you type with a device, but that's interesting. That's an aside. So when you write down what happened, how you reacted physically, sometimes our body is the only Mm -hmm. indicator that we're upset because in a business meeting, hopefully you're not going to yell and yell back and react in a situation. But after the meeting, if you pay attention, your body might still have knots in the stomach, stiff neck, clenched jaw, sweaty palms. Some, Some people tell me they get rashes, headaches, et cetera. 
So mm-hmm. what ha- how you reacted physically, verbally, emotionally, and how extreme were your reactions? And to take it all the way, what potential addictive behavior you might have engaged in? Because as you know, oh. some people overeat, some drink, some smoke, some stay in bed, some spend too much money. You know, there's all those behaviors. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And what do we do when we notice that our stress response involves, you know, whether it's addictive behaviors or unhealthy patterns, how do we move out of those as a part of our stress response? Right. So the next piece is to, there's two or three things you do. Number one, you, you learn to stop yourself in the middle of an overreaction and stop stands for stop, take a breath, observe and proceed. And that comes from John Kabat-Zinn, the father of modern day mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I've actually learned to use that in my own life, that when I'm in a stress reaction, whether it's self-made or coming from another person, I've learned, and it's not perfect. It's a process. It's a growing process. I've learned to catch myself in the act of overreacting and say to myself, does this situation really warrant this degree of anxiety and anger? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is it really important that I can't find the right gift card at the grocery store because I'm on my way to a party and I'm late? Or, I mean, if nobody is in the, is in the hospital, mm-hmm. then this situation is not that big a deal. It's a matter of keeping perspective. Yes. The other half is about learning how to reality spin. So going back to the example of you're always late, Catching yourself and saying, well, was he always late or was it I was just irritated this one time because I was tired and hungry and Mm -hmm. putting a pen to paper gets you really into deeper, deeper things. I'll give you another example. I had a cold one day and a friend came over and she said, oh, maybe you've got allergies. And I, I blew up and I'm like, I don't have allergies. I have a cold. I don't get allergies. And Later on that day, I thought, wow, I kind of was mean to her. Why did I overreact like that? Especially somebody who wrote the book. I should know better, right? (laughs) Sure. So so I actually (laughs) followed my own advice and got out my pen and paper. And I realized that 20 years ago when my father was on his last legs, I was sick. And I really, really wanted to get on an airplane and go to Houston and be with my father. So I went to the doctor to try to get an antibiotic. And she said, well, you have allergies. You, there's nothing an antibiotic is going to do for you. And I got so irritated with this doctor. And I said, listen, I'm sick. I want to go home. My father is on his deathbed. Please give me an antibiotic. And she did finally succumb. But I hadn't realized that I was carrying that experience with that doctor to this current day. So that's an example of how we Mm. hang on to stuff from our past and how we unpack it by writing with a pen and paper. That's so interesting that you say that, you know, it, it's kind of affecting us differently with pen and paper, because I feel that intuitively. So it's interesting to hear that confirmed. Oh, wow. Well, there's a book called The Artist's Way. Mm -hmm. And at this very moment, the art, the author's name is escaping me. But it's, it's all about writing. She has you writing every single morning and she calls it morning pages. And she says, commit to three pages because if you say, I've got to write every day for an hour, that's too big. But if you say, I want to write for three pages, you know that's doable and it will only mm-hmm. take a few minutes. Quite often, once we start writing, we write for longer. Oh, her name is uh, Julia C- Cameron. Now, speaking of morning, you talk about holding a morning perspective meeting with yourself Yes, as a self-care exercise. Tell us about that. Well, that's related to the writing. Mm -hmm. For me, for me, it might be sitting outside with my coffee with a pen and paper. It might be going for a walk, but somewhere where your mind can be clear. And by the way, there's very many, there's much research that supports the idea of spending time outdoors. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a double whammy. If you can go outside and do your morning perspective, then you can uh, get the, the beautiful value of being in the sun. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely feel that intuitively to be true as well. I always feel better when I've been outside. The other thing, yes, of course. And the other thing about your morning perspective meeting is you can take a look at your calendar and prepare yourself for what's to come so that you're not chasing your tail, trying to keep up with your day. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. 
talk to me about burnout in general, because I know, you know, you were an expert on this topic. How are you seeing burnout specifically affecting women? Oh my gosh. Well, the pandemic is such a perfect example. Yeah. And in particular, there were several reports and articles written about women who were working from home, managing their children's schoolwork from home and dogs and cats and dinner and lunch and (laughs) and all these things that had to be done. And so women were stopping their work in the middle of the day to go help the children get logged on to their Zoom meeting or whatever they had to do. And you can imagine a six-year-old trying to get set with their Zoom meeting every day. Disaster. A six, seven, eight-year-old. And then making sure that they can pay attention and that the teacher, everybody, like, like what happened with us today, make sure everyone can hear each other mm-hmm. and the child has the right book in front of them and all that. And then after that, the child's got to get, maybe the, if they're really young, they need help with their homework. So many women were starting to go back to work at 7 p.m. because a lot of their daytime hours were spent supporting yeah. their children. And then they're working till 10 p.m. or midnight and they were getting really, really burned out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're describing that was me. That was happening to me. Um, How do you think going forward, you know, because the pandemic was so stressful, but also a pause in a way, how do we avoid burnout going forward as we sort of re-enter post-pandemic life? Well, in addition to all the other tools I've already described, one really important one is setting healthy boundaries. Yeah. So for example, if you know Fridays are not your best day, don't schedule meetings on Fridays. Yeah. Now I know if you work for a boss that always, that comes in only on Fridays, then you're going to have to do the best you can drink your coffee, go for a walk, drink some water, you know, and just do the best you can. But in general, if you're a manager, you can have a no Friday policy on your door Mm -hmm. and say to people, I'm in the office or wherever you are, but I have to get my budgets done or whatever it is you have to get done. Do not come to me unless it's an emergency, but from Monday through Thursday, you can have all of me, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. it's whatever those boundaries are. Or for example, don't schedule a million zoom meetings back to back every day. (laughs) And Consider making them 55 minutes or 50 minutes so you can decompress between each meeting. The other thing you can do with meetings is say, do I need to be in the whole meeting or do you just need me to give a report so I could come in and like at 1115, stay 15 minutes and then leave and get my other work done? Because as you know, all these Zoom meetings prevent you from getting all your other work done. They do. Yeah, they sure do. And one thing for, that's worked for me is blocking off my time as best I can and trying to have two hour or four hour blocks of time devoted to getting my work done. Then I can take my laptop outside. Mm-hmm. And if I'm trying to write a blog post or write a proposal, then I can get it done so much easier if I don't have any interruptions, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I've been trying to do that more and more too, sort of blocking my schedule, you know, batch working, um, you know, doing the high attentive tasks at one time. And then, you know, so that I'm not shifting my brain from, from side to side with different, yeah, with different. um, Another piece of advice I heard recently was most people are relatively fresh in the morning compared to the afternoon. So Mm -hmm. don't spend all morning on your email and your social media, only deal with the really urgent emails. So true. Do do your creative genius work in the morning, your writing, your problem solving, your budgeting, whatever it is, your work is architecture, accounting, law, law, finance, whatever it is, do your creative work first thing in the morning then go deep with all those extra emails later in the day Mm -hmm. because you don't need a lot of creative energy to answer every darn email. It's so true. (laughs) Yeah, that is so true. Another thing I've started doing uh, recently is I started unsubscribing. I am subscribed to so many different groups and I try to spread them out over all my emails, but it was just getting out of hand. So on Saturday, I spent an hour unsubscribing to all these extra groups that send me emails. Brilliant. Yes. That's such a good practice. I've been trying to do that as well. 
Well, this has been incredibly helpful. I know that your book is just chock full of good advice and worksheets and just practical steps for pulling ourselves out of burnout and stress. Um, We will link up to that in our show notes, but tell us where people can find you online. Uh, Thank you. They can find me at JaniceLitvin.com. And for all your listeners, I would like to give them a free chapter of my book. Oh, and they awesome. Can, thank you. They can get that at JaniceLitvin.com slash book. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Janice. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Kristen.